Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Fred from Fred's Garage, and uh, today what I think I'm going to do is do a real deep review of the Bronco in uh, JL Jeep uh, Wrangler Unlimited. Um, my wife drives a JL uh, Wrangler, and uh, we've owned that for four or five years, and uh, so this review isn't going to be about rock crawling and... Uh, going through swamps and all that it's going to be about daily life with a bronco and a jeep wrangler and if you're thinking of buying one um watch the review it fast forward it it's a long review but watch it fast forward it go through what you want to go through and uh come out at the end with which one you think you're gonna like better let's go and thanks for coming back to the channel please subscribe hit the notification button and uh the like emoji and uh let me show you the two vehicles. Here we go. Okay, so on the left, I have my brand new base Bronco Sasquatch 2.7. And on the right, I have my wife's 2018 Wrangler Unlimited Sport. So the Wrangler JL here does have aftermarket wheels and tires, and it has a two inch lift, but um, it has the look that everybody knows. I don't think there's a person in the world that doesn't know that that's a Jeep Wrangler. And here's the Bronco, and I gotta say, Ford hit it out of the park. I owned a 69 Bronco, and this new Bronco has all the styling of the 69, of the first generation, and um, all the modern technology and road rock feel and drivability. Um, Ford just did an unbelievable job with it. Um, perfect looking. So here's the Jeep's interior and console, and it's a very nice interior. The only thing I don't like about the Jeep that I prefer on the Bronco is I like the window switches on the console. It's just more convenient. Um, and I don't like the way the um, smaller screen just looks like an afterthought, where the Ford's is it's much nicer placed in there. The one thing that the Wrangler destroys the Bronco on, though, is the fact that it has AC vents and cup holders. There's no reason the Bronco doesn't have these. The Bronco's interior is very nice, too. Um, it looks more modern. I do have to say, though, that I don't like the feel of the knobs on the Bronco. They feel cheaper. The Jeep's knobs just feel real sturdy. And uh, I don't like the fact that there's no lights on the console. It's very dark at night. And once again, no reason for there to not be AC vents there in a cup holder. I mean, you can get aftermarket cup holders, but you can't get aftermarket AC vents. All right, the rear doors of the Jeep. Um, it's a lot harder to get in and out of the Jeep than it is the Bronco. It's just tighter. As you can see here on the Bronco, the seats are more forward. There's more space to get in. It's just the way I think the wheel wells cut on the two of them. As you can see in this uh, video section that the Bronco door is a lot longer and it's really nice not to have the frame. Um, it makes it more e airier. Um, it's, it's weird to get used to because most cars do have a frame. So I had to take a little time to get used to closing it without you know being able to touch the frame on it. But you get a lot more ga a glass surface. It's a lighter door and that's something the Jeep will have to do in the next upgrade. This is just a little look of the um, Jeep entertainment engages when you start it up and open the door. Um, there isn't really much going on like it is in the Bronco. I do say that I like the gauges better in the Jeep. I like just having the solid gauges, maybe because I'm old school. And the Jeep Uconnect system seems to me to be a much better system. It's rock solid, it's uh, fast. It just works better, in my opinion, than the Ford. Um, sync system and like I said that's just my opinion okay so this is the Bronco when you first open the door and when you first start it up and um, it's a lot nicer graphic wise than the Jeep um, but as I said it has a much bigger screen in the uh, dash where the gauge is I don't like the fact that you have the speedometer. It's like repetitive because you have this speedometer on the uh, gauge. 
I do love the way the entertainment system starts off with the um, rocks turning into a horse. And, and um, But like I said, I have a hard time with this um, sync system. If I um, start it up and, not ha and do not have my iPhone connected, it connects perfectly. But if I plug in my iPhone and charge it, then it doesn't connect. All right, so here's a look under the hood. This is the Jeep Pentastar 3.6. Been around for a decade or more. Uh, it's a very good engine. Never gave us any problems. Um, feels powerful. I know the Bronco is supposed to be more powerful, but I don't know. This one just feels just as powerful. Um, it looks good under the hood. I like the way it looks. Everything's easy to access. Okay, it's the Ford 2.7. Uh, great motor. It's quick, twin turbo. Um, it's my first Ford in like 20 years, so I don't really know much about the longevity. We'll see how that goes, but look at it. It looks like somebody got a pot of spaghetti and just threw it in there. Ford really needed to put a cover on this or make it like a little bit more organized. You can tell the 2.7 because it has the snorkel in the air and take in the middle if you have a look at one. Okay, here's the Jeep center console stack. Like I said, I don't like the switches there. Um, the Ford center console is more beefier and uh, more ergonomic. Um, I do kind of like the mechanical uh, four-wheel drive lever. It just feels like if you're out and stuck, you can just force that to go into four-wheel drive with the rotate and switch on the Ford. I don't know yet. All right, so the Wrangler seats. The Wrangler seats aren't as comfortable as the Ford seats, but I gotta tell you, the Wrangler seats fabric seems much more sturdier than the Ford fabric. Okay, the Ford center console. Um, I like it better, it's wider. Um, I don't like the knobs, we always spoke about that. Um, but it is, um, more ergon ergonomic. And um, I really like the window switches there and the mirror there, it's more convenient. I like the knob, I just wish it had a, a manual lever to put it into four wheel drive and then you can use the knob for the other stuff. This is the Jeep's uh, visors and upper stack. Um, this is just very simple. It's a lot, it's a lot simpler than the Ford's. This is the visors and the upper stack on the Ford. It's uh, much nicer. And um, if you're gonna order a Bronco, click the box for the accessory switches. It's the best $200 you ever spent. It costs you over $1,000 to put them in yourself even if you can. So make sure you click that button for the accessory switches. So it's amazing how close these two are. The Jeep's door opening is 30 inches. And the rear opening is 16 inches. <clears throat> it's identical to the Fords. I just think the Jeep's wheel well sticks in more. Here's the front seat of the Ford. Um, it seems bigger, but it's still only 30 inches. I think it has to do with having no frame around the door and it makes it feel larger. In the rear, you can see the seats are a little bit more forward and the uh, wheel well isn't as obtrusive, but it's still only 16 inches. Let's measure across from inside the window to inside the window and it's 60 inches on the Jeep. And um, all right, here's the Ford. Uh, the Ford seems a lot larger but it's only 60 and a half inches from inside the glass to inside the glass. So it's gotta be with those doors again. That makes it feel just airier. I like it not having the frames. Okay, door opening height. The Jeeps is 43, but as you can see, the roll bar is lower on the Jeep. It's 42 compared to the Broncos. And I think that makes getting into the Jeep a little bit more difficult also. 
So keep in mind that the Bronco is a hard top and it's 43 and as you can see the roll bar is tucked in up there. Okay, now we're in the garage and I lined them up windshield to windshield. Uh, sorry about the UPS box. Um, as you can tell, somebody copied somebody because they're almost identical. Um, the noses are almost the same length. Um, now remember the Jeep's uh, Unlimited Sports, so it's the base model too, and it's it's got a much nicer front bumper than the base bumper that comes with the Bronco. And I know you can upgrade both of them, but we're just comparing apples to apples here. And amazingly, the Bronco's windshield is a, a degree or two more vertical than the Jeeps. If we look at the back, the Bronco's probably a couple of inches longer. But like I said, that's a hard top. Okay, here's both of them in the garage, and you can see they fit in the two-car garage, no problem. Pretty much the same width. The Bronco is a little taller door-wise and fender quarter-wise. But um, yeah, it's just uncanny how similar everything is with the two of them. They could have been uh, twins. All right, so this right here shows you the door openings. Um, they're pretty much the same. I'm gonna measure them in the middle. The um, Jeep has a lot more sturdier plastic in the back though, I'll tell you that. The Bronco's rear door opens more. And um, like I said, the plastic is a, a lot flimsier than it is in the Wrangler, but um, the Bronco has a more uh, like squared off feeling to the way the back is, uh, which I like better. The lighting stinks on both. All right, let's measure the inside of the Jeep. The inside of the Jeep is 39 long and 44 wide. And now we'll do the Bronco. So the Bronco from the back of the door to the back of the seats is 36 long. And I was gonna say 34 there, but I add two inches for the uh, measuring tape, roughly. And the width of the Bronco is 43 wide. So it's um, three inches shorter and one inch shorter width wise, but it, it seems bigger than the Jeep, but it's a little shorter. I will do height from the top of the roll bar to the floor, and they're the exact same. The Jeep is 38 inches from the top of the roll bar to the floor. As you can see it right here. Remember, we gotta add on for the size of the uh, measuring tape. That could be 37 inches. And the Bronco, same thing. It, it, the roll bar is more squarer in the Bronco, so it seems bigger. But it's 38 inches also, roughly. I mean, these aren't official specs. They're just me with a tape measure, you know? And you can see it's like 36 plus a couple for the tape measure. It's a small tape. All right, so now we're gonna measure from the back of the center console to the back to the back door and uh, with the seats down. And there's a little lip on the Jeep, probably about three inches. And the length of it is 70 inches from the back of the console to the back door. And uh, you can see right here, it's, it's, it's open there. And it's about maybe, I don't know, three inches or so. So the Bronco, the seats are much flatter, but they're much higher. They're about probably four to five inches high with that lip there. And it's about 68 inches to the back door on the Bronco. This is just gonna show you how high that lip is. It's, it's high, it's a whole hands width high, so. 
you want it to lay flat in there, you definitely need to put something to, to raise that back. All section. right, let's see what's under the floor. This is the Wrangler. And you know, when you lift up that center section, you have um, a pretty good size bin. I do really like the way it has those holes in the beginning there to put your bolts. And it has six tie downs compared to the Bronco's four tie downs. And here's the bottom of the Bronco. It has two different bins. One of them is uh, the rear one there. You can take a plug out and put some ice and stuff in there and it'll drain out. I don't know if that's really what it's for, but it does have a plug. And it has four larger tie downs. All right, so let's look at the back. Uh, on the Jeep, on the driver's side, there's a 12 volt outlet. And um, it's, it's half carpet, half plastic back there. And on the Bronco, on the passenger side, it has a light and it has a 12 volt outlet. And on mine, because I don't have an amp, it has a little cutty cab. So here's the rear door of the Jeep. It's, um, it's lower than the one in the Bronco, which makes, if you have a soft top, the Jeep back window doesn't go up, so it makes it harder to go in there. I really love this little plaque that tells you about the length, the width, and the departure angle and stuff. Um, it's cool. The Bronco with the door open and the glass down and the soft top down has a bigger opening. The door is taller. And for any of you sticker people out there, you should make that same little plaque that the Jeep has for the Bronco. Uh, that'd probably be a big seller for you. All right, let's talk real world uh, gas mileage. I mean, Florida's flat, so we got back all the Florida. We're not driving crazy. The Wrangler is getting an average of 20 miles per gallon. Right now, it's using. I guess every heavy Wrangler is using that amount. And here's the Bronco. I've had it for uh, six weeks. It's my third tank. I have been running super. Um, I got 746 miles. It's an average of about 20 miles per gallon. actually happy with that okay so let me uh, give you my opinion um, you can't go wrong with either one they both got their pluses and their minuses they're both great uh, they're priced similar um, either Bronco is gonna be a lot more expensive now just because of uh, getting one so the Broncos green color is called eruption green darker and the jeep screen color is called mojito two things i like better on the bronco is that i like the fact that you can get the sasquatch package on any trim level with a jeep the only way you can get the rubicon package is if you get a rubicon which is usually one of the higher more expensive trims jeep should make the rubicon available on all its trims and um I really like the frameless doors. That's a huge plus on the Bronco. Um, on the Wrangler, if I had to get a new one, I would. I really like the 4XE, which is the hybrid, plug-in hybrid Wrangler. Um, that's great. I could honestly go from my house to my work, which is about 15 miles with no fuel whatsoever. And I'd still have the uh, gas engine if I wanted to go on long trips or, you know, something just not to worry about it uh, with that whole electric range, range anxiety. But um, yeah, that 4XE is a nice um, option that I'm sure the Bronco will have in a few years. So we'll see what the future holds. But uh, the moral of the story is go out and buy one of them, man. They're the great vehicles. You'll have fun and... Uh, it's the only SUV convertibles that are made. And um, there's one for everybody's taste.